greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. It is our Friday edition of New Hope Radio, and we're glad to have you on board with us today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're in a series. It's entitled The Other World, The World of Spirits. And what an important topic it is. And you know why it's so important? I'm going to fix something over here right now. It's important because it's the world that we're living in. We don't see it, we don't feel it, we don't hear it, but I'll tell you what. We can suffer the effects of it. And that's what we're talking about today. So thank you for joining us. You might be listening on 1590 WARV Awesome. Maybe you're far away and streaming on WARV.net. Really cool. And maybe you're going to join the chat at newhopecc.tv, click Facebook, and we're there live in person as well. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, Meter and Greeter Aaron is not with us today. That's okay, he's not with us, but Brian is stepping up, and Brian's going to keep it going. Paul is already on board, so thank you for joining us. We're going to have a great time here studying the Word of God, and these things are important. They're really, really important. And that's why we want you to like and share these programs, because people need to hear these things. They might think we're nuts. That's okay. That's okay. I don't care what people think. What matters is, will they get the truth? you got to get the truth out there. That's the important thing. And then what they do with it, that's their choice. So think about it. I mean, I'm sure we've all had the question, why is the world in the condition that it's in? Why is life so hard? Why is life so difficult? Why are there broken hearts and pains and afflictions and struggles that people have? You know, you, you don't have to look far before you see, like, man, crime out of control. War. Everywhere there's a war somewhere sometime. Seems like our country's never been out of war. Unfair governments. Governments are out of control. Abusive governments. Immorality. Morality is on the decline. Immorality is on the incline. Isn't that crazy? And you know why? It seems like the more they promote the teachings on evolution, the more people become immoral. And you know why? Because when you remove God from the equation, you remove morality, you remove right and wrong from the equation, and everything becomes relative, and therefore you have a decline in morality. And we're going to see today that behind a lot of this stuff, oh yeah, it's the devil himself. He is on a seek and destroy mission. He wants to destroy two things. You know what he wants to destroy? Number one, he wants to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. And number two, he wants to destroy the family. You notice all the crazy laws that are being passed in our country today? You know what they are? They're an attack on the family, on the traditional family, with transgenderism, homosexuality, abortion. All these things are an attack on the traditional family. They're an attack on the way life's always been. 6,000 years, life is going along fine. And now all of a sudden, it's under tremendous attack. And Satan, he's behind it all. So we're going to take a look today at some of the methods that Satan uses to attack the church, to attack the traditional family, and also to attack you. Okay? And you know what he does with non-believers? Oh, we're going to see what he does with them too. Now, there are many people that deny the existence of Satan. But I'm going to tell you something. It's through Satan that we have the entrance of evil into the world. So number one, let's talk about the origin of evil. Where did it come from? Well, remember we said Lucifer, before he became Satan, the devil, he was Lucifer. He was God's anointed cherub. He was a beautiful angel. He had the authority over the earth. He was blameless. But what happened? Pride was found in him. 
He rebelled against God. And he managed, this is how deceitful he is. He managed to connive one third of God's angels that saw God to side with him. Remember we said, oh, how many angels are there? Myriads upon myriads, thousands upon thousands. He got one third of them to side with him and rebel against God. What do you think he can do with humans? Oh yeah, he's got the whole world in a deception. We're going to see that today too. So, now that Lucifer has rebelled against God, and he's on the earth, we're going to note several aspects of his methods. We're going to see today his present location. Where does he wander? We're going to see his kingdom, his methods, his adversary. And we're going to end off with, oh yeah, his doom. Because you know what? In the end, he loses. With all he's trying to do, he's going to lose in the end. So, what's the devil's present location? The common notion that Satan and his angels are imprisoned in hell is false. He's not, he's not like the ruler of hell, okay? He's not. He's not even there. Satan and his angels are at liberty right now. And we have a scene in the book of Job, chapter 1, where the Bible tells us, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So this is after his rebellion against God. And for some strange reason, God still let Satan come to heaven. I'm like, I don't know why, but he did. And the Lord said to Satan, where are you coming from? And Satan said, ah, from roaming up and down on the earth and walking around on it. So Satan appears to come before God to give an account of the stewardship of the earth. Now, the day of Job was about 2,000 years B.C. So this is when this, that's when it was written anyway. So this is when this happened. You know Job is the oldest book of the Bible? Moses wrote it. And I guess that's the first book that he wrote. So there are appearances of Satan throughout the Word of God. He's not like always there. But I have a little graph in front of me. I'd love to show you the graph. If you're on Facebook, you can see this graph, and I'm just going to explain it. There it is. I kind of made it up myself. kind of proud of it. If you're on the radio, you can't see it, but I'll explain it. We have the original earth, where Satan has his domain. He had access to God. Then he rebelled against God. He shows up in Eden, and he tempts Adam and Eve to sin against God, and he was successful. He goes back to God, accusing Job of a false righteousness because God has blessed him. Then he shows up in the wilderness to tempt Jesus to try to get him out of the plan of God. Okay? Then we, he, there's war in heaven in the Great Tribulation. That's coming up. And uh, he's cast out of heaven, down to the earth. During the Millennial Kingdom, he's in the abyss for a thousand years. Then he's let loose. Then he appears before the great white throne judgment and he's sentenced to the lake of fire. That's basically a summary of the existence and the destiny of Satan. Okay? And we'll get into that more and more through the series. Now, again, his present location, planet Earth. This is where he lives. He's got a kingdom that makes him a king. Okay? In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus even said it. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand? And that's where they were accusing Jesus of working through the power of the devil. And Jesus says, I'm not working through the power of the devil. If I'm doing good, that means Satan's divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? The point is, Satan has a kingdom that makes him a king. And we noted yesterday, in that kingdom, he has a hierarchy of fallen angels. He has rulers. These are, these are preeminent ones. These are the highest officials. He has powers. These angels are under the rulers. He has world forces. These are those that are over the nations. You ever wonder what makes these nutcases, like in North Korea, in Iran, do the things they do? It's the world forces. It's these evil influencers 
They're the ones that get them to do the things that they do. These crazy governments that torture people, where does that come from? It comes from these world forces, okay? And then there are spiritual forces. These are the evil spirits that tempt you and me. So from so the, you've got those that tempt rulers of nations, and then all the way down to the little people like us. So in every realm, there are fallen angels. There are demons that try to influence people. And the intention is to influence people away from God, against God. This brings us, thirdly, to Satan's methods. Satan is the deceiver of the world. That's his number one approach. Deception. I will deceive people. John said it in 1 John 5.19. We know that we're of God. And the whole world, that's everybody that's not of God, lies in the power of the evil one. That means that they're under the influence of the evil one. Satan deceives by blinding the minds of people. He blinds the mind. You know the most difficult thing to do is to tell somebody that's deceived that they're deceived. That's like... That's like so hard to do. You say to someone, oh man, you're deceived. They're like, no, I'm not. That's the whole point of deception. You don't know. See, when you're sick, you know you're sick. When you're hungry, you know you're hungry. When you're thirsty, you know you're thirsty. But when you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. And so how, can, how is there hope for anybody that's deceived? There's only one hope. They have to be open to truth. If you're open to truth, the deception will be lifted. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Who are those who are perishing? That's those who are lost. They're lost without Christ. They're dying in their sins. He said, And why are they perishing? Paul said, in whose case, oh, here it is, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. See, the unbelievers' minds are blinded. And you can't tell them. You can tell a person that's blind that they're blind, and they'll say, yes, I know, I can't see anything. But when you're spiritually blinded, they don't know it, and they won't believe it. So, but, you see, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. Why? That they might not see the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That they would refuse, here it is, the good news of Christ. Most people, when they hear, Jesus died for your sins and you can be forgiven and go to heaven, most people say, nah, I don't believe it. That's dumb. That's stupid. Not for me. I tried sharing the gospel with people. You know what they say to me? If it makes you happy. If it works for you. <laughs> I'm like, it works for everybody. This is not like, well, maybe if I want to, I will. If I don't. No, man, you're lost without it. L-O-S-T. You're lost without it. And you remain under the influence of the evil one. How does he blind people's minds? How does he do it? Here's a few things he does. Number one, he uses false teachers. He's got false teachers in the church. Yeah. He's got false teachers in the world. These, in these intellects. The intellects of the world. A lot of them are false Teachers that are teaching evolution, climate change. You know, it's like they try to make us look like the bad guys because we don't fall for that propaganda. And you know what it is? Propaganda. Bill Nye, the weather guy, is that his name? He's a propagandist. He's an atheist. He's a God hater. He's completely lost. He's completely blinded. He is under 
the influence of Satan. He is. And he comes out every once in a while with something dumb. And because he might have some certificates and some PhDs and he has, he's on TV that's supposed to give him credibility, he's got no credibility. And people that have real knowledge, God's knowledge, can see right through him. Okay? Even the guy that founded the Weather Channel said, climate change is a hoax. It's a hoax. It's propaganda. It's a money maker. Don't fall for it. Okay? Don't. The sky is not falling. Okay? So he uses false teachers. He gets people to live in wrong priorities. You realize how many people today live for everything except the soul? They live for everything except the soul. They live for their garden. They live for their health. They live for their grandchildren. They live for their pets. I love animals. I love grandchildren. I love gardens. But the soul, man, that's the most important thing because that's going to live. That's going to live forever. He's gotten people to be materialistic. He's gotten people to believe in the Big Bang theory, where there's no God. God didn't create us. We came from a water molecule somewhere. And boom, here we are. Wow. I'm like, how did the radish become an ear of corn? That's what I want to know. How did the radish evolve into corn? And how did the watermelon evolve into a lemon? Or a pineapple? Or a fig? I mean, or, or a rosemary bush. How'd that happen? That's incredible. Wow, that's a miracle. Only God can do stuff like that. You know, the Bible tells us that God created everything after its own kind. Now, what makes more sense? God does. How do we get all the species of everything? God created everything after its own kind. Oh, I get it. God made the watermelon tree. God made the fruit tree. God made the insects. God made the animals. God made the... That makes sense. That makes more sense than somebody saying, well, although we're all different, we all came from one thing. That doesn't make any sense. That's just foolhardy. And the devil's laughing. He's, he's busting a gut, watching people fall for this stuff. See, and again, Satan has a plan. Get God out, put him in. That's the plan. And even when it comes to the church, in America, I, he's not trying to stamp out the church. Through persecution and violence, we see that in other countries. He's trying to seduce the church into conformity with the world. i got to say, he's not doing a bad job. A lot of these churches that are springing up today, they're in conformity with the world. There are some bigger mega churches today, and now they're coming out and saying, well, we don't see anything wrong with homosexuality. People have to find their own place. You know, that's an abomination. That's heresy. Somebody's not understanding truth. You see, if you're afraid to make a stand for what's right, then you're going to fall for what's wrong. And that's what's happening today. Satan's getting it. He's, he's doing a good job. He's getting people to become just like the world, and he's getting the church to take on the philosophy of the world. When the Pope says, oh, we're brothers with the Muslims. No, we're not. No, we're not. He says, we all worship the same God. No, we don't. We don't worship the same God. There's only one God, Jehovah and Jesus Christ. And if you don't worship Christ, then you're not worshiping anything true. Because he even said, no one gets to the Father but through me. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one else. If you reject Christ, you reject God. And if you reject Christ, you reject salvation. And if you reject salvation, you're in deep trouble. Deep, 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 deep doo-doo. That's who you are. This is truth. See, Satan's methods. Satan's methods is to get you in trouble and to keep you in trouble. And a lot of people are there. And you know what? Man, they like it. They like it. They're okay. They're okay with that. They're okay with where they are. Like sheep 
going to the slaughter. The sheep don't know they're going to be slaughtered until whoosh, the knife shows up. And a lot of people, they're not going to know the danger that they're in until it's like, uh-oh, too late. John said, do not love the world nor the things of the world because they're going to deceive you out of a relationship with God. He said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, oh, and the boastful pride of life, they're not from God. They're from the world. What's the philosophy of the world? If you see it, you can have it. If you see it, you want it. Isn't there a lot of envy? Isn't there a lot of lustfulness? Isn't there a lot of boasting? Where does all that come from? It all comes from God. And people are now replacing spirituality with social service. Doing good, doing good, doing good. Which is good, but it doesn't replace spirituality. Doing good without spirituality will never get you to heaven. So what have we covered so far? I've only got a few minutes left. I can't believe it. We've, we've seen that evil came into the world through Satan, that he lives on the earth, but he also has access to heaven. He has a kingdom that makes him a king, and his method is to deceive all people. Now, his adversaries, Satan's number one enemy, number one enemy is Jesus Christ. He hates Christ, hates him, and he's out to defeat him. And he can't get to Christ. So the one that he tries to get to next is the Christian. And then the third one, I believe, is the non-Christian. He wants to keep the non-Christian lost. And he wants to try to uh, somehow hinder the Christian from pursuing God's plan for their life. He wants to create a stumbling stone, a stumbling block in their lives, in our lives. And this is the ongoing battle between good and evil. And that's why there's evil in the world, and it's going to go on. And it's going to go on until Jesus Christ returns. This battle will always be here. But you know what? At the end of the battle, man, he loses. He's done. He's done. Because what we saw was, there's a judgment. He's going to stand at the judgment of the great white throne. And you know, when John described that, it's kind of sobering. He said, I saw a throne in heaven. And earth and heaven flew away. And I said, he said, I saw the small and the great standing before the throne. And there was no place for them. It's like, imagine, imagine where there's no place at all in existence for you. That's how it's going to be for the judgment of the lost. And then he said, and I saw Satan and the false prophet and the beast and they were thrown into the lake of fire. And all those that had rejected Christ, that had the mark of the beast, they were also thrown into the lake of fire. Because there's no other place to put them. There's no other place. See, folks, this is the reality. The reality of eternity. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Heaven is the home of God. Hell is the pit for Satan. And when humankind dies without Christ, they don't have what it takes to live with God. So there's only one other place to go. So they're sentenced to the lake of fire that wasn't created for them. It was created for Satan and his angels, but they have to take part because they were partners with Satan in life because they said no to the gospel. See, everybody has the choice. 
and you say, well, I don't know, I'm giving you the choice right now. Well, what about people that don't have the choice? Forget about them. What about you? You can't stand before God and say, what about them? God will say, what about you? That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you believe in him, you will never perish, you'll have everlasting life. God gave his son for you. He gave his son for you so you can have victory over death. You can have victory over Satan. You can have victory over sin. You can have victory over everything that's trying to hold you down and destroy you. The victory is in Christ. And that's why he's under such attack today. And that's why you'll never see him lifted up in the media. You'll never see Christ lifted up in the secular world. Why? Because it's run by Satan as part of his methods. You'll never see anything godly. I mean, yeah, once in a while, something gets through. A good documentary, something gets through. But for the most part, man, you'll never see it. You'll never see anything or much of anything on television or in the movies that's going to lead you to Christ. It's not going to happen. If you look at what's on TV today, it's all ungodly anti-God, and the intention is, here it comes, keep people entertained so they don't think soberly. That's it. Keep people entertained so they don't think soberly. Hey, you think about that today, because this is serious business. Hit like and share. People need to hear this. Join us right here on Facebook, Sunday morning, 9 and 11 a.m. Go to newhopecc.tv. You can click on Facebook or YouTube and stream our Sunday services. By the way, all these radio shows are stored on our YouTube channel. You can go back and watch them later or get someone else to watch as well. You have a great weekend. We'll be on the radio only, 3 o'clock Saturday, right here on 1590 WARV. Great station. Make sure you tune in. And I'll see you next week for more of New Hope Radio.